Thomas coming to you with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at this second figure from the new Unique Toys, uh, not Predaking, that being Ironhead. Now one thing that's uh, really very impressive is the fact that th they've basically redid the box. Uh, there's this really nice kind of, like, uh, I, I don't know, like texture on it, which is really very cool. You had an open kind of win window package. Now for a comparison, this was the original package, and as you can see, uh, it's it's a, it's a smaller package, but it's also not as well pretty looking, I guess. I mean, you got this big empty spot right here. You got a really nice image here of the Warhawk, but even the the actual text, I mean, it's very simplistic. This one has a very nice red with a, a silver surrounding. I mean, really very cool looking. I really much prefer this packaging. You still got the same uh, nicely detailed image here, but just overall the box is much nicer. Now, you come around here to the side and it says uh, the Warlord, that's what they're calling their not predicting Ironhead. I'm ready to to crash anywhere. Other members are in progress. We really do our best and really need your support. So basically they're telling you guys that, well, they're working on the other ones, which that's kind of cheesy, I, I guess. Not, not too sure about that. Uh, you got the various warnings here on the bottom. On this side, you got Iron Head, and then I believe they're, they're they're talking about Warlord, which is over 40 centimeters in height. It's the most powerful combiner. Well, we'll see. And then even on the back here, like I said, much nicer detail on this. Uh, although they they still uh, really do need to proofread their stuff better. Final product made there slightly. I don't even know how I would say that from pictured prototypes and it says iron head never takes advice from others being extremely arrogant he thinks one should only mind one's own business and hates others bothering him once he makes up his own mind no one can stop him his 30 horns although he's only got one horn knocks down everything in his way but his bulky body weakens his mobility and then obviously you see his rhino mode the robot mode and then the leg mode with a uh, laser light uh, i'm assuming those actually light up i i think which that'd be really kind of cool so um but there you see the the differences in the packaging and, and like i said much more improved that's about it for the packaging so let's get him open and see how cool he actually is Alright guys, so here we have Ironhead open up and out of its packaging. Now, I remember reading somewhere on, on one of the forums that the person in charge of this entire project was really kind of disappointed in the reaction to the Warhawk. Now, I personally didn't have really any problems with that figure, but I know some people who did. And the guy who was responsible for this basically said that from here on out, he is going to personally supervise all aspects of this. And I'm really happy to say that it really seems like they've stepped up their game. Now, setting the figure off to the back just just for right now i mean you saw the packaging you could see how much nicer that was one thing that uh really kind of ca caught me was here's the instructions for the original warhawk uh the new iron head is a much nicer looking very kind of glossy instruction manual very nice and then when you open it up the uh, the pictures on the inside are a little bit nicer than what we had here so uh they they definitely improved that and that was one thing that I was really kind of surprised to see. Now, they also did include the collector card. If you remember with Warhawk, this is what we had. And some people complained, and I, I, I might have even complained about how, how badly it was actually cut. And it's just a piece of cardboard. It's nothing spectacular. With Ironhead, though, they sent out a brand new replacement card. As you can see, uh, this is the original one. This is much nicer looking. And this is that very thick credit card thickness which a lot of third-party companies are doing now and in addition to that which they really didn't have to send but it replaces this and kind of makes up for it they also include obviously iron heads then you flip it around here on the back both of them have their tech specs now uh this one yeah that one had the tech specs as well so basically they just absolutely improved the card as well so the box got an improvement the instructions got an improvement the collector card got an improvement now does the figure get an improvement? And I can honestly say, yes, it does. While I still have no major problems with the Warhawk figure, Ironhead here, or who's kind of gotten a nickname of War Rhino, just takes it a little bit further and really does improve some things. Now, at first, obviously, he does come with his, his weapon. It's just the sword. But just like what we got with the Warhawk, uh, you can see that there is a, a difference between them. I really like this. It, it, this kind of looks like it's a painted uh, application, hand painted on the inside here. This red 
red bit, but really nice nonetheless, and I love the fact that they are different. That's an aspect that I really do appreciate. Now, Warhawk came with a hand. This guy comes with a foot. Now, for a comparison, here's the G1's foot. Now, as you can see, it, it is a bigger foot, uh, longer and everything. Um, it is uh, a little bit taller as well, but this thing is really very impressive. Now, the articulation in it, I'll get to it in a little bit when I actually show the limb mode for this guy. But the best part about it is you come around here to the bottom, you got two little switches. You turn that on, turn that on, and he's actually got green LEDs. That's really very cool. I absolutely love that. Now, I don't know really how to remove the, the batteries from there because the only way I can see is you got a screw here. You might have to take this whole thing apart, so I'm not exactly sure how you remove the batteries. But it does say Unique Toys inside there. Zoom in so that you can see it. Uh, there's that. And then on the other side, you got the logo form as well. But overall, this is a very nice piece. Now, like I said, it is articulated, and I'll show it off a little bit, but these are the toes moves forward and back you got this little bit right here that also move forward and around you got the heel that bends and then because this is designed to be the uh, the left leg he's got a ankle tilt here which swivels out but again i'll show that off here in a little bit but really very nice and this can be used uh, as, as a weapon form as well so what you do for that you come around here to the back section you have his uh, little tail hanging out there go ahead and tuck that around and then you got two little tabs here and here that peg into holes here and here and this is this is kind of tough to line up but once you do it's hard to see underneath here but getting that tabbed in there and then giving that a nice little push there just like so you can actually fold this over and as you can see you can replicate the the same kind of look that his original G1 toy had with his his weapon sort of in terms of a cannon fitting onto his back so for a comparison obviously the best way to compare these guys would be to compare it to his G1 counterpart so here's him and here's his G1 self now obviously they both have the cannons on here but you can see that there is a much nicer kind of look going on here with the new unique toys one one thing that i really do like about this is it's a very much kind of a, a classic update to this original g1 toy now i know some people are kind of complaining because i i believe original or early sample images showed the the color being a little bit off this being more of an orange instead of the the original red color that the actual toy had so i know a lot of people are really very happy with that but removing this so that you can get a full kind of look at the rhino moods getting these out of here just like that i mean you can see there is a nice update here i mean it, it is a little bit smaller than this guy and obviously this has a lot of die cast this doesn't have any but you can see a lot of similarities and i really do like this guy taking a closer look at iron head uh, as as any kind of update to a g1 figure would kind of necessitate uh, this guy has a lot more articulation even in his his rhino mode uh, the legs here you can see can rotate right up here kind of at this thigh area they also bend here at the knee they also rotate they're on a ball joint here so you get a lot of articulation there the foot actually has a little bit of pivot in as well same with this opposite side this side here as well rotates uh, at the shoulder area bends here at the elbow again rotates because it's at a ball joint and then the the feet also have a little bit of pivot the mouth actually opens and closes which is a really nice touch and then you can get him to turn left and right now he doesn't look like swivel or anything but that's perfectly fine but you can get some really cool poses with this guy like he's about to uh ram somebody like Get it real low to the ground like he's getting ready to launch after him or something i mean i really like the um, amount of articulation that's in here one problem that i do have is on the bottom you can see a little bit of a ugly paint splash or something from from something i'm not entirely sure because all these bits as far as i can tell are really mostly molded in this red color well you that's painted red one thing that i will say that i i really do like on this is that when i open it I didn't get a whiff of spray paint smell. Now, if you remember, Warhawk here had this really very ugly kind of painted chest piece here, which, I, I mean, it, it bugged me, but it, it didn't bug me too much. But you could totally see that it was spray painted. Now, setting him kind of off to the backside here, uh, there, there doesn't seem to be any of that on here, which is a real nice improvement, I personally think. That was probably the, the ugliest part of that entire figure. Now, for the transformation on this guy, unlike the Warhawk, uh, he, he doesn't have as much of a G1 transformation 
collection as his uh, predecessor did, or previous released Unique Toys figure had. First, what you want to do is you want to take these uh, shoulder, or I'm sorry, these thigh bits, kind of angle those in, and those are actually going to tab in along the side, just kind of push them down. They're all ball joints, so when you actually remove them, sometimes they will pop off, and when you got them in, or when I got mine in package, uh, they were actually removed, so all you do is pop them back on there, and then, like I said, fold those down, line those up, and peg them in. Then you want to angle this section in, and then you're going to rotate this around. Get this. There's a lot of rotation here getting this lined up there we go so you get it flush along the side like that there we go kind of bring it in bring it in just like so now this part's actually kind of tough to do because there's a clip in here that's really stiff and does actually make me a little nervous you have to really pull this uh, you can see that that section right inside there tabs into a hole in there and it's really tough and you can see it, it needed a lot of force to pull it out now one thing that's nice is that with that same amount of force nothing broke or anything so that really does impress me then just split these take these fold these out you're going to create his feet ah, just like so those are really very stiff as well and here you have his legs done then the the arms you're just going to rotate these around fold this bit here on the side up like so this section here tabs in and again it's very secure just loosen that up rotate that around and you're gonna rotate this around and rotate this all the way down straightening this up and then you just bring this up and that just kind of sits here along the back section um, that's kind of ugly I'll get to this in a little bit and then just take this and fold that back down just like so this section on the outside of his forearm actually slides up revealing more of his hand do that on this side as well lift this section untab this you're gonna rotate this down this section here rotates swivel the arm all the way back kind of tuck this just up there take this section here slide that up fold this bit down and then the head just rotates no actually yeah just spins that back just like so, fold it back, and then there's the uh, the robot head. And then usually I'll kind of angle these a little bit more down just to kind of fill this up a little bit, but uh, keep that pushed down. And here you have Iron Head in his actual robot mode. And again, the improvements that Unique Toys made to this figure really are very impressive. The feel is just much better. Now, in all honesty, the, the Warhawk, as I've said time and time again, really never bothered me. But there is a noticeable difference when you compare the plastic from this figure to that guy. One thing also that's nicely improved is the use of ball joints here, especially here in the elbow, which allow you to rotate his arms so you can bring his sword in front of him where well, you couldn't really do that with with warhawk all you had all you could do is keep his arm straight ahead which did kind of suck but you know it's it's it was their first toy and i i really am thrilled that they improved things here now my biggest complaint that i would have would be the arm area nothing really locks into place and to move his arms around you you kind of knock all this stuff loose so that's one part that really I, i'm not a very big fan of uh, I guess you could kind of leave it down like that and make it look a little bit better. I mean, it, it, it's just it, moving the arms around. You're, you're constantly fiddling with this because this rotates. This piece is just flopping around. That's probably my biggest complaint. Beyond that, though, I really think that everything else is nicely done on this figure. Now, for his articulation, the head will rotate left and right. Um, this whole section here does move around as just part of the articulation in the actual uh, rhino head. So you kind of have to hold that down. Otherwise, you might end up rotating everything else around. But the head does move from, from left to right. The, the shoulders here are on ball joints, but they are really kind of stiff. And then you get a nice in and out. And like I said, just depending on what you do with the the shoulders can really kind of screw things up. The elbows, as I said, are on ball joints, so they move forward to back. They also kind of rotate. He rotates here at the waist. The hips move forward and back. They also rotate at the upper part of the thigh. They bend at the knee, and then the feet can kind of pivot upwards. So 
a lot of articulation in this guy, much like the, the actual Warhawk. And I mean, I, I just personally, I like this look. A lot of people have asked me about the MMC version, and I, I just don't like the aesthetic of it. Uh, I, re I appreciate what they did with kind of really beasting those out, but for me, this is just a, a classic toy, and it works perfectly in that classic display for me. So that's exactly where he goes. Now, for a comparison, here he is. And up first, we're going to take a look at how he stacks up next to his G1 counterpart. Now, obviously, the G1, again, a much bigger figure. But you can see where there is a lot of similarities with this guy. I mean, I do like how they have something similar here with the, the shoulder bits. I mean, it's really cool. And then you've got this section down here, which nicely is replicated there. I mean, it's a wonderful nod to the original G1 toy. Just updated, which is what, like, classics is for me. And again, you can see how the color scheme here, especially with the arms and the shoulders and the bit right here, is a lot more reminiscent of the G1 toy. So I'm very happy that they went with that actually kind of color instead of the, the more orange bits uh, being put on here. Uh, I, I just think it looks much better with this kind of red look. Because I do like using them in my classics display. Here, uh, here you see him next to the classic star screen. And you can see he's a little bit bigger, but he is roughly deluxe size. And that's obviously illustrated here when you take a look at uh, Voyager class Megatron. Uh, specifically, the I believe the United Megatron. That has the more G1 kind of color scheme. But, I mean, this scale, it really doesn't bug me because these guys should be smaller in their individual modes. It's only when they become, what well, Warlord that they should tower over everybody. I'm going to show you how to transform into his leg, but first we're going to go back to his uh, rhino mode. So first what you want to do, just kind of straighten out the head, I suppose, and then just tuck this down. As you can see, it actually does kind of tab in here, but if you tab it in, it locks its articulation so you can't really rotate it. Uh, I, I don't necessarily mind it kind of flopping out here like that, but uh, you can pat, tab it all the way in. Then with this, this, like I said, this is kind of a... A, a mess here with these arms. You want to rotate this up, rotate this out. You got the little tab here, and then you got the slot on on the forearm right there. You just bring that up and uh, kind of line that up into place. Take the the side panel here, slide that forward, and then you got another little tab there, and then the hole, and then just bring that down like so, and then bring that around, and then we're gonna just straighten out his leg and actually duh, he was upside down so we're gonna go like that do that on this side as well rotate that rotate that bring the arm up lock that into place there are you actually gonna tab in for me maybe kind of something like that and then slide this oh I actually didn't even tab it in there there we go and then bring that down just like so straighten out his leg keep that there straighten out that little bit Oop, drop them like so take this fold this down fold this down and then you're gonna bring these two together and again this part is really very tough you, you gotta get that little kind of notch to go up there so usually what I do is kind of lift the head back so you can really get good leverage on it and it's really very tough there we go and uh, oh, and see, it didn't go all the way in. Ah, son of a gun. That's a pain in the butt. So we're going to pull that out. Try to do that again. It, it's, I mean, like I said, it, it doesn't, oh, here, we're going to pull the his little tail out too. Um, it, it doesn't feel like anything is going to break. That's one thing that I really do appreciate on here. The, the plastic quality feels very sturdy. It's just... It's it's almost like the little notches are too big for this. So, well, get that, and then, ah, well, well we're going to put the tail down because it's stabbing me. Ah! All right, so instead of struggling like I was doing, I, I just did it off camera real quick. Put that back down like so, straighten that out, and then again, you want to rotate these out. And like like I said, the these are just on ball joints that... Uh, pop off sometimes you kind of have to be delicate with them it's not too bad I mean like I said it's just a ball joint but kind of wiggle slowly here and then straight straighten that out like so rotate the leg around do that on this side as well uh, spin that around so you have the the legs like so and here you have him back in his rhino mode and 
it, it really is a fairly simple transformation, and, and I do really enjoy it, uh, except for that part right there. Now to transform them into the leg mode, uh, you're going to come around here, you get spin this around like so, you're going to angle that right there. This little bit right here is also really tough to get to. If it's all the way down like it is when, when you first get it, it's like damn near impossible to get at. So I'm just going to use this little uh, screwdriver and wedge that up but that's a very strong ratchet joint which really makes me uh, believe that the, the connection here for this is going to be really very strong and I do really like that so then we're going to just bring this in we're going to ink, uh, angle this in do that on this side as well I'm going to spin these back around tuck that in tuck that in on that side as well and then actually what you want to do is there's a little tabs here where can I it's it's hard to see on the inside here where can I show you um, you, you can kind of see a little red tab sticking out right there it tabs into the yellow side you kind of angle this down and line that up and kind of push it in like so so again angle this down to bring that uh, tab lined up with the the upper body and there we go lock that into place like so then you want to rotate these around actually bend these in just like so kind of getting those in position this guy's legs are flopping around and then keep that up just like so then on the bottom here you got two little holes and then you got the two little tabs here on the guy's feet all you do is plug those in just like so and here you have the foot for warlord uh, all said and done now like i said for his articulation he can bend forward you can see that you can get a, f a wide f motion here and then obviously you got the posability here with this knee but you also got these toes that are articulate and also light up as you can see you also got this heel that comes down now i don't i don't know why you would want to do that i mean maybe if you don't fully extend uh, that I mean you can do something like that just give them a little bit more heel support which is really very nice I love that I love the nice clickety joints here too on it and then as I said he also pivots like this so you can get you obviously you're going to be able to get very wide poses with this guy and that's really very cool I absolutely love it and like I said you got the little lights on here and uh, I mean that just for me is a, is a wonderful representation of, of Predaking's leg and I'm really happy about it and I absolutely can't wait to get more to be able to fully assemble the guy. Now the bottom line is while this figure is not a perfect figure by any stretch of the imagination, it is an improvement over their previous release, the Warhawk. The beast mode is absolutely fantastic looking. I love all the added articulation to it, it just gives a much more realistic and much more fun toy to play with. The transformation can be a little bit of a fiddly kind of mess, especially when you're trying to get the, the arms situated properly, and then of course the waist area here, that tabs in very strongly and, and does cause me a little bit of concern, but I really think that the robot mode is the best looking of this whole thing. Despite the fact that again his shoulders are kind of weak, it's a really nice representation of Headstrong, and as I said I really do believe believe that the production quality on this release is better than that Warhawk. Improvement in terms of their overall quality. Doesn't have any of that kind of ugly spray paint or anything like that. The plastic quality feels really sturdy and very good. And as impressed as I am with this, it, it does kind of make me wish that they went back and revisited that Warhawk figure. If this is, say, an 8 on a scale of 1 to 10, Warhawk was really about a 7, but I think that they could, based on all these improvements on this guy, punch that particular figure up to an 8 as well. I just hope they continue on with this, and I can't wait to get the rest of the figures. But beyond that, that's about it, guys. So if you are interested in picking this guy up, go ahead and click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to Big Bad Toy Store, and you can pick this guy up, as well as pre-order the other ones to be able to complete your own Warlord figure. And until next time, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optimatimus. Keep in touch with me. Find our recent purchases as well as all upcoming video reviews all at Facebook.com slash TeamBottomus. And follow me over on Twitter at Twitter.com slash And until next time, I'll talk to you later.